Hi, Melissa. Welcome to the show. Hi, Jason. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, Melissa, we're talking about a thing that you had at work where a person was filing for insurance and there were some allegations regarding fraud. Uh, Can you tell us a little bit about that case? Absolutely. So uh, there was a, a woman that had a theft claim. She was robbed um, in her own home. She was not home at the time. She was at work. It was during the day. Um, And she had um, a number of very high-end handbags, shoes, belts, jewelry, et cetera, and came home from work. And um, she had been robbed. And because she had homeowner's insurance, she um, submitted a claim to her insurance company um, totaling over $200,000 worth of personal property. Oh, wow. So what happened there? Why was the insurance company uh, so stringent in that case? So for some reason, it, it raised a red flag, um, primarily because the cost of the items were, were so high. And um, But the, the woman, which we'll refer to as the insured, um, had done everything right um, in this case. She obviously as any person would do when they're when they're robbed she called the police right police came out right away there was a police report involved full investigation that went on um she even um gave them an idea of who she thought it might be and um even with all of this information the insurance company sent out their sent out their own investigator um who then determined that it it should be a legal case and she was then investigated for fraud oh wow so they're essentially alleging or had a suspicion that she essentially did not lose the items and were just essentially following a filing a false claim yes so you at that point receive a letter of reservation from your insurance company saying that they reserve the right to deny your claim and the next step is to have your evaluation um, under oath taken, where you go and um, it's essentially a a deposition where you're asked questions under oath and it's extremely detailed and very, very personal. They delve into a lot of personal information. Oh, wow. So, I mean, not only did she lose a lot of stuff, but now she has to go through even more hoops, even more devastating before she can get her stuff back. Um, Is this common in theft cases? It's very common. the, this is the only case, um, I'm sorry, there's only one other case that I've had like this where they didn't have my insured take an evaluation under oath. Um, I would say nine times out of 10, they do take it to this um, next step with, a, with getting attorneys involved. So Melissa, tell me a little bit about your uh, day job. Why, uh, what, what role do you play in these insurance claims? Absolutely. So I'm a public insurance ingester and I am licensed by the state of Massachusetts. I do not work for the insurance company. I am retained by the insured to advocate for them and to help them understand their rights and what their policy covers and what it doesn't cover. You have a lot of coverages on your homeowner's policy that you probably don't even realize that you have. And so the first thing that that we do is um, once we determine the cause of the loss, we then will walk the insured through the process of, you know, what their coverages are, what their rights are. And then we take the entire claim off of their plate and estimate all of the damages. We present that to the insurance company. We, from the time that we're hired, we are the person talking to the insurance company on their behalf. So once we're hired, they are no longer dealing with their insurance company. Their insurance company company funnels everything through my office and only talks to me. Wow, so that's a pretty unique thing, uh, what you've gotten into in terms of like pu- being a public adjuster. It's definitely a niche and most people don't know that we exist. Right. And the reason why People don't know we exist is quite honestly, your insurance company doesn't want you to know. Right. Okay. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. And essentially it would be 
the equivalent to um, allowing the IRS to file your tax return for you. So, so I have your, so I have your website here, and I also have your phone number um, in this video. When should people be calling you, and what stage of the process is the best to call Melissa? The earlier you call me, the better. Uh, we have many clients that call us before they even file a claim, okay. and. We are high, hired on a contingency basis, so we do not get paid until you get paid. So oh, wow. it's the best free phone call you'll ever make. That's great. That's great. Well, thank you for coming on today, and thank you for all the great information. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Jason.